Hi everyone and welcome to Asami Rat Care. Right, so today's video is going to feature the birthday girl that is Twizzle. So Twizzle is a year old today, um, so happy birthday Twizzle. Um, sadly, <laughs> it's not going to be the jolliest for her because while she had, um, she'll have a little bit of a treat. Um, the reason we're doing this video is we're going to talk about weight loss. Twizzle needs a diet. <laughs> so those of you that have watched um, many of my videos before may remember the preeclampsia video. Um, that was little Twizz here and Twizzle was unfortunately, um, she was due to have a litter um, it was several months ago now um, and she got really bad preeclampsia which is nasty. Um, it can um, kill. In fact it, it generally does. Twizzle was a bit of a miracle, weren't you? was a lot of prayers said and she made it. Um, but yes, so Twizzle, when she had preeclampsia, basically had to have um, a caesarean at um, day 21. She had 18 babies in there and at the same time she was also spayed. Sadly none of the babies made it, they were kind of too young. We, we tried with one of them but it was um, it was not to be, bless him. Um, but yes, so Twizzle made it, which was the really important thing and it was um, a very emotional time for us both. Um, but the thing with spaying and rats is whilst it does have some health benefits um, it does also tend to cause them to um, not burn off as much weight let's say and before her litter twizzle was always one which we'd call kind of a good doer which basically means she didn't need a whole lot of um, calories in order to maintain a really kind of healthy solid weight if anything she was slightly over um, but she wasn't bad by, by any means you know she was a good kind of solid rat um, however, now she's spayed, unfortunately Twizzle is now fat um, and I would say if you don't know how to identify a fat rat I would um, encourage you to watch, um, there's a, a video on how to assess rat's weight and it looks at slightly too thin and slightly too fat rats. However, I will quickly <laughs> attempt to demonstrate um, just for kind of purposes of this. So Twizzle is fat, you can see there she's quite wide, um, she's got no kind of natural waist at all, she's actually slightly pear-shaped, her bum is bigger. Um, if I turn her that way around, um, she could be early stages of pregnancies apart from lacking a womb. Um, so yes, Twizzle is fat. Um, so what we're going to talk about is weight loss strategies and how to apply them. Um, what I will do, I've just got a um, Snufkin here. Snufkin is actually slightly too thin. So if you can see from Snufkin, she's um, a lot kind of like slimmer, more slender. If I hold her that way, there is no belly bulge. Are you listening to us? Um, and she is slightly kind of underweight. Um, you can just see around, well, you probably can't see, the light's not the best. Let's see if we can turn this up. Ooh. Yeah, that probably works a bit better. But um, around her kind of haunches, she's a little bit pinched in just over there. Um, she needs a bit more muscle tone. To be fair, she's got hyaline degeneration. She's um, getting into an old lady now, bless her. So she's by no means um, kind of a, a kind of young fit rat anymore. So a better um, example is Snufkin here, not Snufkin, sorry, Foo here. Foo is kind of determined not to show you this, but it's actually quite a nice weight. So she's kind of like long and thin. When I hold her to the side, no belly bulge. Um, and when I hold her down here, when you can see it, she's kind of like a long thin tube rather than a rather broad blobby thing. Now Twiz isn't obese, Twiz is overweight. Um, and I, what I thought I'd do is we give her a little bit of a weigh in now and then I'll talk you through some of the weight loss strategies that you can do. And then it, in my subsequent videos, I will kind of check back in on Twizzle and how her weight loss journey is doing and kind of give you a little quick update at the end of all the videos uh, until she's back down to a decent weight. Um, so Twizzle, this is your first weigh in. You look at that face. This is not a happy face. She understands what this means. <laughs> And we shall see what we have to work with. Right, so how I weigh them, um, I'll show you this because it's just useful. Digital kitchen, kitchen snails covered with bits of sawdust, bowl, and then a little cube. So basically I will zero the scales. In fact, let's turn it around here. Ignore the fact I have um, my isopodics enclosure. Twizzle is trying to escape a fate. There, we have the scales. Right, I wonder if I can put them on there. Oh, that would make it a bit easier to see and then I can actually turn this up you know this is where like good planning for videos is probably what other YouTube channels kind of do you just get what you get with me I'm afraid so Twizzle are you ready scales time right 
So I've zeroed that with that setup that they're in. So when I add it, it's 426. Right, Tris, this is what we've got to work with. I'm going to get my pen and we're going to write it down in green. So it's a little day one. Right, so Twizzle is the kind of rat that I would say she probably wants to be, um, I, she, she could do with losing probably about 50 grams. She may be able to get away with 30 grams and be okay, but she definitely wants to be below the 400 mark. So that's our kind of target with it. Um, Twizzle is a little bit kind of sad about this because she likes food very much. Um, and because it's her birthday, I'm going to give her a treat because, you know... Um, it might be a last one for a while. Um, there. Happy birthday, babes. But she's not going to be getting any more treats. So this is the first thing when you're talking about dieting rats to think about. What extras do they get? What food do they get overall? Um, so Twizzle, um, in fact, my girls don't get loads of treats. Um, I mean, perhaps. <laughs> um, but more, more than that, it's like when I give them a treat, I like, like it to mean something. So it's either like this, it's a bit of a treat of the birthday, a bit of training with them. Um, if I want to kind of get them to be, where are you going, miss? I'm not going to let you run off. You're the star. Yes, star. <laughs> Twizzle doesn't know what to do. She doesn't want to share her treat, but she doesn't feel like she's, she's safe eating it. Just so many. She's also a little bum heavy right now because of her, her, her waistline. Go on, just sit there. Right, so... Treats are something that mine don't get very often. However, I would say the average rat owner probably does give a fair amount of treats. Um, even healthy treats, if you're giving excesses, excess of them, will kind of add to the calorie load. And losing weight is simply reducing the calories up in the exercise. Um, and a mixture of those will help um, basically the rat lose weight. Um, and you have to get that right. So they're not losing too much weight, um, but they're kind of they're still able to kind of like function. You don't want them to get really skinny because that could cause them to be unwell. Um, but you want them to have a nice gradual weight loss. So I like to aim for about 10 to 20 grams per week. We'll see if I achieve that with Twizzle. Um, but treats is a really good way to think about it. Um, you can still give treats. I know that's something that people get a lot of pleasure out of. But think about what you're giving. Hello. Uh, we've got another star of a previous video come to visit. Um, so in the case of... Um, my lot, if I want to give treats to Twizzle now, what I'll probably do is I'll just go into a food and get a bit of food out of there. Um, and I'll pick one of the smaller bits, something like a pea flake, which I know she quite likes. Um, you tried to, you stole them Twizzle's birthday treat, Faye. Anybody that says that um, being half blind is a disadvantage, I've not met Faye. <laughs> what, did she, did she eat it? Well, you let her, she's a lot smaller than you. Go on. Um, yes, Twizzle only got half a birthday treat and now wants to go out for a run and I can't really stop her because that's another key thing exercise but yes so treats we'll talk about kind of like calories going in at the mo at first and then we'll go to the calories going out aspect of the kind of like fitness regime that we'll be we'll be targeting in fact I'm just thinking I've left the feeding cage open so there's going to be lots of rats going in and eating food that I don't want them to <laughs> Sorted. I'll explain why I have a feeding cage later. So, kind of calories going in, we've got treats. Treats are a very obvious one. Cut down on the treats or remove them altogether for the rats that you're trying to diet. Um, but if you are going to give them, keep them really healthy. What can actually work really well as a healthy treat is something like um, a leaf, leaf of mint. Contrary to popular rumour, mint does not discourage rats. Rats really quite like mint. I really don't understand why kind of people think... Uh, mint is something that will stop rats visiting you. They've clearly never been near my rats. Bug. No, nope, lost you. Um, so something like a herb leaf basil is another good one. Um, a rice crispy is a fairly <laughs> healthy treat. Now bear in mind, even healthy treats, if you're giving ridiculous numbers of them, are not healthy. So if we were talking about like um, giving a bowl full of rice krispies, um, that is not um, a healthy treat option. Um, what you need to be doing is cutting down the numbers that you're giving as well as um, kind of giving something that's a healthy option. Um, next thing is dry mix. So one of the biggest sources of food that they get is their kind of daily day to day food. And that in, for most rat owners is featuring um, a dry mix of some sorts. 
you might, you might get most of their food from that um, and occasional vegetables and other things but we'll talk about those next so quickest and easiest way to um, diet a rat which Faye does not need because Faye is blooming skinny and does not believe in eating do you babes um, she's far too busy causing mayhem um, yes one of the easiest things to do is to reduce dry mix so what I'm going to do and I'm going to do it from um, tomorrow morning is I'm going to drop the dry mix for the group now when you've got rats like um, Snufkin that you saw earlier, Faye, and I also have Eddie, um, who's currently got into the feeding cage, but I don't mind because she's skinny and I've closed the door on her so she can get some extra food. Um, so I've got three skinny rats in my group and then I've got um, Twizzle, who's fat. <laughs> and then I've got lots of rats that are in between. So like Bug here and um, Fu, who you saw earlier, who's a nice weight um, and um, various other kind of rats. There's Juby over there and Hopes. I'm kind of pointing at rats you can't see them it's kind of pointless but yes the rest of my group are about the right weight and then um, we've got three skinnies and one fatty and I've got to kind of try and balance that for their requirements but by reducing the food and um, currently they're on 120 grams and Twizzle's kind of maintaining on that I've been keeping an eye on it for a couple of weeks just to get my head around um, what's going on um, but on that weight I do have skinnies in the group um, so that's where my feeding cage comes in. So I'm going to reduce that down to, I'll probably try 100 and see how they get on. Um, that's a fair reduction though, so I may end up going 110. Um, I've got to bear in mind the skinnies and I've also got to bear in mind um, that I will want to have a litter for a bug at some point. <laughs> oh, sorry babes, did you fall off? Can you come and visit me? Sorry, this has got rats coming to climb up here um, and they were knocking things off and falling down. But yes, so, um, I'll be wanting to have babies from bugs soon and I don't want her, like if you underfeed a rat that you want to be pregnant, um, their body can decide they don't want to get pregnant because there's not enough food around. So I've got to balance all this in. And that's one of the fun sides of having a, a, a big group like um, I've got at the moment. Um, but it's nothing that we can't deal with. And, and I deal with that by, I will reduce the overall dry mix I'll keep an eye on the, pe the, the people in the group that are about the right weight. I want them to stay about the right weight, but I want Twizzle to reduce weight and I want the skinnies, if anything, to slightly increase weight. And that's quite difficult. So the skinnies once a day will be going into a cage with lots of extra food, hence the feeding cage. The feeding cage is just a small cage. It can be a carrier. This is one of those. Sorry, rats just pushed this off something. Um, yes. So feed, feeding cage is basically any small kind of environment that the rats can go and kind of sit in with a bowl of food and I will vary that from just dry mix, like just extra dry mix will help a skinny rat put on weight um, but it's sometimes extra wet meals as well because they tend to be more calorie dense and I'll do that every day um, and they will get extra food that way and that means that they won't get so affected by our reduction of the kind of food to the rest of the group. The other thing I do that also helps with the, with kind of balancing that dry mix is because I scatter feed, um, it means that all the rats have to work for the food. What I'm also going to do um, as part of the kind of next thing, scatter feeding also increases activity levels, but I already do this. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to scatter feed in a more challenging fashion. So at the moment when I scatter feed, I'm a bit lazy. I just throw it around the cage and it normally ends up sitting on the top and some of it will get kind of dug into the soil or into the litter tray shavings. But what I'm going to do to make it harder, particularly for Twizzle, um, because she's a bit slower and less agile than the rest, I'm going to be hiding it more around the cage and I'm going to dig it into the soil a bit. So basically, if, you, if they want to eat, they have to do a bit more work to get the extra food. And the bit more work will increase Twizzle's activity levels because she's having to work harder rather than just graze off whatever she can find. Um, but it will also kind of even things up a bit because you tend to find the rats that are slimmer are a bit more active, a bit more agile, a bit more capable. Um, the rats that are, white, are kind of broader quite often are a little bit kind of lazier because um, it's physically harder for them to move around. So it will get to us exercising more and help little rats like um, Nutcase here um, who, who just... Um, just wants to play bless her but because the food will last longer it take them longer to find when she decides she's she's finished playing and goes to find something to eat there'll still be stuff around um what i should mention on this is i feed my group once a day and i do that for various reasons um in the main to do with longevity 
and I should really do um, a video on intermittent fasting and rats, um, but effectively in a very, very short, um, having regular periods with no food available is really good for rats in terms of extending lifespan. Um, there's a lot of, lot of science behind this. Um, it's one of the most well researched areas um, out there and effectively um, I, I, by feeding once a day I get like all the food in the morning and then by the time it's probably about three or four hours later it's mostly gone and they spend the rest of the day with no food. Now it would be slightly easier from a dieting perspective to put in the food twice a day and if I'm if I struggle so much that I, I can't manage it with this once a day feeding I'll do that um, because that will basically give them two goes at the food before Twizzle hogs it and just tw Twizzles. Part of the reason some rats just end up putting on more weight is they just keep on at the food, whereas others will grow bored and go off and do something else. They've eaten their fill and they'll stop and they'll self-regulate their, their weight very well. Twizzle doesn't really have an off switch, bless her. She'll keep looking for food until it's gone um, and then it'll all be gone. So by kind of breaking it up around, I'm hoping to kind of make her have to work harder to find it and potentially lose interest faster. Um, whereas the other ones will kind of keep going for longer. If I split it into two daily feeds, that would give them two shots at it before her, which is, is def definitely one of the options. I'd just rather not do it because of the kind of longevity side of things that I would still like to prefer to do. But we'll see if it comes to that. If I'm not shifting away, I'll have to kind of go back to the drawing board because being overweight is worse for your longevity um, than most things. It's really, really not good for them, bless it. Um, and as much as she spayed, it will still predispose her to tumours. Right, so dry mix, scatter feeding, reducing the amount of dry mix um, and scatter feeding in a more challenging way will all help kind of even things out of the group, as will taking in the rats that need extras and giving them um, a shot at it. The other thing to bear in mind is um, what you can do and what I'll probably have to do with Twizzle just because she's the only one in the group is when you put food in there, um, taking them out for a period of time. So I will basically take Twizzle out when the food first goes in and um, I'll play with her around the rat room. I'll try and get her running because exercise is good. Um, but effectively, when the first food first goes in, um, she's going to come out. So she's going to the others are going to get a good amount of time to have a go at the food first. Now, this is something that I'm probably not going to do every day. And some days I might give her a go at the food for like 10, 15 minutes and then take her out um, and then put her back in after like an hour or something. Um, but effectively, the problem with it, as much as it does reduce the amount they eat and gives the others the first shot, it can also slightly unbalance the diet because rats instinctively tend to go for the nicer bits of food, which include things like the high pro protein foods. Now, Twizzles of an age now where missing out on a little bit of protein is probably not going to be the end of the world. Again, there's a, there's a few like they also love going for the high fat bits like seeds and such. And again, she can probably afford to miss out on a little bit about that, so I'm not too worried. But I don't want it to kind of get massively unbalanced, so I'm going to keep an eye on that and see how she does. Um, but it is something that can really work in a group like this, where you've got massive mixed requirements and one rat that you need to diet. So yes, so for the next um, week or two, she's going to spend the first 10 to 15 minutes out of the cage when the food goes in. Um, what I may also do, like I say, is give her... 10 to 15 minutes with the food and then take her out um, on alternate days and that will kind of balance things and then I'll return her when the bulk of the food is gone on those days. Um, it's it's something that you do feel a bit guilty about they get a lot of pleasure out of food but I know that if I can get her into a better state she's likely to hold her weight better. Um, she's just got overweight and it's been creeping up for a while. Um, I should have done something before now. We've all been there. <laughs> Usually somebody else tells you your rat's fat. Sadly, I do know my rat is fat. It's just been one of those that um, I've been distracted by baby rats. Yes, I have, Juby. Yes, that's me. Um, yes, so we'll be seeing how that goes with Twizzle. Um, other things to take into account. So I've talked about treats. I've talked about dry mix. So the other thing that we give our rats a lot is um, vegetables and sometimes wet meals. So vegetables and fruit. Um, Actually, some people think I'll just give them more of those, more and more of those, and then they'll eat less dry mix. Um, and I should say, if you're not already limiting the dry mix food, you just do. Um, that is fundamental. Don't give them a, a bowl to free feed. Sorry, babies are doing acrobats over there somewhere. Um, yes, I, I kind of assume that's a given for most people, but actually it probably isn't, because I know there's still some myths out there that if rats don't have food available all the time, they'll die, basically. You don't die, do you? Nope. 
Um, yes, so don't free feed. <laughs> but vegetables, um, vegetables and fruit do still contain calories. <laughs> you can overdo them. Um, some are worse than others. So anything that's starchy or high carbohydrates, so like your potatoes, um, your possibly parsnips and sweet potatoes to an extent, um, even carrots, um, are kind of more higher in calories than your kale or something like that. And fruits, particularly those that are high sugar fruits, um, they're also very high in calories, uh, relatively. I mean, they're, they're not kind of higher in calories than something like bread and such, but they contain calories and they're something that you can overdo. So if you're feeding a lot of veg every day, um, it's worth cutting back on that as well and seeing how that makes a difference. Um, and then as well as kind of the vegetables and fruits, and I will say probably cut down on the fruits and focus on the kind of high fibre vegetables in the main. Um, you can still give the odd bit of fruit, but just, just don't overdo it and try and keep it to, let's say, once a week uh, maximum. I mean, they, they do need to still get pleasure out of life, but we also want them to be a healthy weight so that they can get more. I mean, it's quite, it's actually quite sad. And I, I think it's something that's brought home that I've been, shouldn't have been avoiding this, but all, all the girls are basically climbing all over the place. Twizzle is ma mostly sticking to the floor. She'll, she'll jump up and have a go, but she just jumped onto my foot like she, like all of them do. And they normally shimmy up my leg and come and visit me. Um, she just kind of looked up my leg, realised it was too hard and just jumped off. And that's actually quite sad because that's not Twizzle. Um, Twizzle absolutely loves coming to visit me and she doesn't feel able to at the moment. So it's clearly affecting her mobility. And that's something that um, I need to sort out for her so she can have a happier life again. Um, because they do, they do enjoy kind of exercise. They enjoy doing things. There, I'll carry you. You so will, Twiz. Yes, I love you too. That's why I'm going to make you slimmer. Um, but yes, we don't want them to miss out on things in life because they're fat and actually that's affecting her. Um, so that's talking about fruit and veg. Um, well worth cutting that down and changing the kind of slant of what you feed a little bit if, if you do feed a lot of it. Final thing, wet meals. So wet meals, I would class as anything that's cooked, anything that's quite heavily processed. So like if you use a soakable mix occasionally, baby food, <laughs> human food. Uh, dog food, anything like that, that you give them as occasional extra meals. In fact, I do know some people that give um, occasional extra meals every day, twice a day. <laughs> some get the same breakfast and the same tea as their humans. Genuinely, that kind of processed food is one of the biggest um, impacts on um, the rats um, in terms of weight gain. Um, generally, if you feed a lot of wet food, you will have an entire group of fat rats rather than just one or two. Um, you may even have obese rats and obesity is getting really dangerous for them. Um, it's something that you need to kind of look at. And whilst I will not entirely remove all wet food from Twizzle because it's a nice treat and it's one that I do give my rats regularly. And I also use it to hide vitamins in, whereas the rest of the group will get the full share of a big bowl full. Um, I will give Twizzle a small amount on a teaspoon as a treat out with me so she can get a bit of fuss. Um, to be fair, I do only give it about once or twice. Uh, what for once every week or t maybe 10 days so they don't get it very often anyway but when I do I will be restricting Twizzle's portion quite heavily and I definitely will not be giving it every day because it is so calorific I mean I spoke about fruit and veg being calorific no it's nothing compared to wet food as soon as you cook something or process it heavily it becomes really easy for the body to break down think of the body like a furnace and it will burn something that's processed much faster and much e more easily than if something's kind of like a, a kind of whole grain or um, a kind of fibrous vegetable. Um, it's something that you just need to take into account. So Twizzle will be on very limited rations of that. So basically she will be getting her dry food, um, regular kale, because I do give them regular kale anyway. Um, I'll be limiting vegetables to uh, and fruit to generally the ones that um, are lowest kind of calorie, lowest available calories. Um, and we'll take it from there. So that's in terms of, sorry, I'm just going to have to rescue Snuffkin. Where are babes? Where are babes? Sorry, Snuffkin had got herself into a position on the cage and she couldn't work out to get down. And she had a little terrified face on her, didn't you? You were probably fine, but I do worry. Yes, go on. Um, she does have high leg degeneration, bless her. Um, so I just keep a bit of a careful eye on her. Um, they tend to think themselves more capable than they are at times. Right, so that is in terms of calories coming in. So the next important thing is calories going out or exercise. Um, 
the more we can get our rats to exercise, the better it is for weight loss. And that's both in and out of the cage. And we do need to think that in the cage, um, they will spe well, they spend more of the time in the cage than out of the cage. So whilst um, we can do a fair bit on free range, the priority should be to look at your cage. So cage setup is important. My cage layout is very active, which is probably the reason that Twizzle is just overweight, not obese, <laughs> with me um, feeding my group a little bit more than I should because I have the skinnies in it. Um, but effectively, what you need to do is don't make it easy for them to get around. And we do need to balance um, what the needs of the rest of the group are. So that can be difficult if you've got oldies in there. Um, but try and make it so you don't have a lot of ramps in there. Rats don't need ramps. Give them branches, ropes, even the bars to climb up. And climbing is a really good exercise form. If they'll use a wheel, encourage them to. So make sure there's a, a kind of nice big wheel in there for them because that is excellent exercise. Sadly, Twizzle does not real run. You can probably tell. Um, and there's nothing I can do to make it do that. Um, nothing that I would want to do to make it do that anyway, because it's, it's got to be something they choose to do. Um, so I'm going to have to focus on trying to get it to run outside the cage. But what I mentioned before about making scatter feeding more challenging will help as well. So if I um, bury more of the food, then she's going to be motivated to dig. Um, and I have a lot of room to dig, you've probably seen my cage, um, but that will be really valuable in terms of um, kind of a, a proper, uh, quite challenging, I don't know if you've ever dug in the garden, but it does wear you out. That's a really good form of exercise too. So by doing that, I know that I will increase her activity levels and actually for the rest of them, they'll probably quite enjoy that. Um, whilst when I do use the feeding cage, I should say, I put food in a bowl. It's the only time I put food in a bowl because I want to make it as easy as possible for them. So it's kind of like understanding um, how rats get energy in and how rats burn energy out. You can use it to your kind of advantage. So when you want a rat to gain weight, you make it easy for them to eat the food and make the food very easily digestible. So squishy stuff, cooked food, dog food, etc. cetera. Um, and when you want them to lose weight, Difficult to eat food, whole grains, um, kind of buried, make them work for it. Oh, Juby, you're a softie. Yes, yes, sir. Sorry. I do love Juby. She's the little rat, if anybody remembers that video that launched us off. <laughs> She's just a babe. I do love her. Um, right, so that's kind of increasing exercise in cage. So it's making it more challenging to get around and motivating them to get around. And that's where the scatter feeding comes in. If you always scatter feed on the floor of your cage, scatter feed across multiple levels. Think about things that are more than just scatter feeding. So, ah, that's my ear, yes. Sorry, a, a rat assault. Oh yes, you can make me just apologize. Um, so I'm probably gonna get some foraging toys out because they're really good. Um, and I'm gonna put them in slightly awkward to reach places. Um, which will mean that those rats that are more agile can get to them and top themselves up so Twizzle will run out of food faster than them and actually she'll also be motivated to kind of get to those awkward to reach places and use a brain uh, which is always a good thing um, just to try and find stuff so, so definitely going to dig out more of the um, foraging toys oh no sorry Faye's just found a way behind the cage to be fair it was always going to happen she's a small rat and she's an asshole <laughs> but she's probably going to be visiting the boys soon but she's such a nice nature, she probably won't eat the toes, and the boys don't eat girls' toes. So I might have to go, go in a little while and rescue her. Um, but yes, so... Um, completely derailed my, my thought pattern now. Um, so, in cage, yeah, so different ways of feeding. Um, what can be quite nice to do, for instance, get some bits of paper, kitchen towel, sprinkle a little bit of food in, tie knots around it and tie it up to the ceiling of the cage and then they have to like really work to get to it. Um, putting stuff in cardboard boxes, etc. If you want any ideas actually, my 12 days of enrichment feeding, which was my first 12 days, there's loads on there. That, those are really useful in this kind of situation to make rats more active, work harder for the food and actually it's fun, it's enriching for them. And the more enrichment that you offer them, generally the kind of more active and engaged they will become. Oh, I think the snuff can, good girl. Um, 
but yes so that's a good way of increasing activity in the cage and then free range is also quite fun so if you can do anything with free range in order to get them to run around more that's really good one thing i found with twizzle which is quite fun is she likes to chase me so i can run from one side of the room to the other and then pat my knees and she comes bounding towards me in fact most of them do because they're quite cute really um, and they just like to jump on my knee and have a bit of a fuss then i'll get up and carefully <laughs> run to the other side of the room because um they do like to try and get under my feet um, and then sit down again and that will get her running back and forward across the rat room it's a reasonable size um, when I was um, free ranging in the house up and down the stairs used to be amazing for that if I ran up the stairs the rats would bound up after me and run down um, really good exercise for humans as well <laughs> sometimes it can be quite good for them um, chasing a feather wand some rats will absolutely love chasing a feather wand and um, that's one that I, I do kind of do quite often to be honest um, and just kind of get them racing around. Sadly, Twizzle is not a rat that's that bothered by the feather wand. I think she doesn't find it interesting now. She used to love it when she was a kitten. She's grown up. Um, and it's possible that because of her kind of weight and how activity levels are harder for her, um, she's kind of... Ooh, talking of feather wands, there's... Oh, that's my ankle. The babies are trying to climb up a feather wand, which is bending <laughs> for them. Um, but yes, I'll also try and kind of get the whole group exercising more and that will kind of exert peer pressure on it. It's a thing in rats. She, she'll want to join if, if she thinks the others are getting something and she's missing out. Um, sounds cruel. Sometimes offering a single treat on free range that is difficult to get into is an excellent motivator. Um, something like, um, actually the best thing I've ever done was I had um, a bottle of I think it was flax oil or, or something um, that was empty and I just dropped it on free range and forgot all about it. Oh, it's a rat that's going to fall. They're not going to fall far though. Oh no, she saved herself. Um, yes, yeah, so sometimes getting like that and I put it on free range and oh my god, they were chasing each other around, bouncing with this giant, like if, if, if I was a rat, that size bottle in their mouths just because it smelt so interesting and exciting. Um, I might actually see if I've got one of those because it'd be quite fun. Um, but that was really good kind of enrichment and exercise for them because they were chasing each other around like nutcases for what, what actually was a really crappy reward. It was just a lick of an empty oil bottle, um, but it was enough. Uh, so that kind of thing or a, kind of like a walnut in its shell, um, getting them chasing each other around could be really good. Even a whole chicken bone, um, not too much meat on it because that's really fairly high calorie. Um, to be fair, like a nut in its sh shell is quite high calories. But you can like, get them have a little bit of a nibble and then take it off them and use it for the next game. Um, but for rats that are food motivated, that works really well. Another favourite game to get the rats moving that I've tried before is the bedding game. So tear up a bunch of kitchen roll and hand it to the rat at the door of the cage. And they will, if, if they're motivated by this, not every rat is, but they will take it, bound away, find a place to put it in the nest, stick it in the nest, bound back and you give them another one. And you keep on cycling that again and again. And if you run out of bedding you just kind of sneak it from the nest to start again um, if you've got a rat that's motivated for kind of making nests it's a really good way of kind of getting them to exercise so is sometimes if you've got a rat that likes to stash treats so get a kind of slow to eat high value treat give them them they run around put it in their stash come back and get another one give them another one so on get them running for a while steal the treat stealing the treats back at the end you can let them have one um, as long as it's kind of a small treat um, and that then basically has given them a lot of exercise for one single little treat but they feel like they've been infinitely rewarded and it's actually quite fun um, for them as well and they do get a reward at the end of the day it would be a bit mean if you took all the treats off them um, but as, as long as they get one they're usually quite happy with that hey sweetheart um Faye, Faye is not happy unless she's on camera <laughs> you're a bit of a star aren't you babes um, so she's kind of like quite interested at the moment but you don't need to lose weight you just need to stop running so much. Faye is a manic wheel runner, which is partly why she's so skinny, I think. Um, right, so that's covered kind of calories inwards. So what they're eating, reduce or remove the treats. If you still really want to give treats, make sure they're healthy, make sure they're small. Actually, one thing that I haven't mentioned that's really useful is think about portion size. So one of the things I see quite a lot is somebody saying, um, look, it's only like, let's say a, a human chocolate button it's only that big it's tiny it really is i give them one i give them one like once a day it's only a small treat it doesn't matter there's not very much now a, a, a kind of dairy milk button if you think about it in the size of a rat um 
So if, if I put a dairy milk button against, maybe Faye's the wrong one because she's like tiny. Let's pick a more normal size rat. <laughs> Sorry, Faye. Um, but look at the size paw that little Hope here has. Go on, let's spread it out. And it's the size of kind of my finger. So it's, it's a little bit smaller than a chocolate button. Now, that would mean that if I was to eat a chocolate button um, that was equivalent size to me, and hand's quite a good way of doing it, um, it would be bigger than my hand. Now imagine me, <laughs> that's like my head size. So imagine me eating a chocolate button that big. Um, and that gives you an idea of the relatively relative size. So that very small chocolate button, even if I only give them a quarter of it, a quarter of a hand-sized chocolate button for me would be a large amount of chocolate for a day. I normally have like a couple pieces that big. Um, a, a tiny little fraction, like quarter of a chocolate piece, would be probably about that size equivalent to me. Really understand your portion size when you're talking about treats or wet meals or basically any food that you're giving to them. Try and think about it in relation to hand size and how much that would be for you to eat. So kind of that, that kind of ring of carrot might not seem like a lot to you, but it's a hand sized ring of carrot, which would be probably be a couple of large carrots. Not a big deal. But then if you're talking about that similar sized bit of bread, doesn't seem very much with peanut butter on it. That's like a giant sandwich. <laughs> um, that tiny, like, like kind of quarter of a crisp. That's a large sharing bag of crisps for the rats to eat. Things like that will really help you when you're trying to think about what an appropriate treat size is. Keep it small, keep it infrequent, enjoy it. You know, if, you, if you're going to give it, make sure it's a kind of good bonding experience with you. But actually rats will get a lot out of just attention with you. Mine come and visit me despite the fact they very, very rarely get treats. They give me kisses, they love the attention. And that's much more valuable to them than any number of treats that I give them. And it's also a lot more valuable to their waistline. Um, so do, do kind of question how many treats you give. Um, reduce the amount of overall dry mix. A good rule of thumb is um, reducing it by around 20% isn't a bad idea if you've got a small group. Obviously 20% in a big group would be a major problem. Um, maybe take away a kind of half a rat's food, total food for the day. So if you're talking about feeding your rats 15 grams each per, per rat per day, then you could take out um, seven, 10, 10 grams. I'll go between about one rat. It's, it's easier with a big group to take out slightly more um, than it is if you've only got two rats. You obviously can't take half a rat's, like, a, an entire rat's food out, but you could take half a rat's food out. So you could reduce your 30 grams to, let's say, 25, 22, that kind of region, um, and just see how they get on with that. Um, in a big group, I can take more. Um, and there's still plenty of food to go around as long as I scatter it appropriately. And I do keep an eye on the skinnies. Um, think about what time of day and how often you're feeding. I should say one of the reasons that I find um, feeding once a day can actually be useful as well. It helps with my skinnies because I feed in the morning. And then what I do is I put extra food in the feeding cage room in the evening. Now, if what I was finding when I was feeding twice a day was I would feed them just before bed and they would get their, their nightly feed at my kind of bedtime and the skinnies would be getting food like an hour before and they wouldn't be hungry for the nightly feed. So they'd get extras, sure, but they wouldn't eat the normal amount of um, normal food and so it wouldn't really make a difference. So by doing this, they're actually hungry in the evenings and can eat lots and lots and lots um, and it doesn't interrupt their tea, <laughs> um, which works quite well. Um, don't free feed. Whatever you do, don't free feed. Um, make sure you're limiting it and I will do something to explain properly why that's um, so useful at some other point though I did briefly touch on it. Um, think about what veg you feed so you can overdo veg when you're talking about dieting. Think about what type you're feeding so your kind of higher fibre more difficult to digest normally less tasty <laughs> vegetables are far better than the kind of sweeter starchier or fruity kind of stuff. Um, wet meals keep them down because they are heavily processed and they're normally really kind of full of calories very useful for skinny rats not very useful for rats you're trying to diet and then it's th talking about exercise so increase the exercise wherever you can first thing to increase the exercise is always in the cage because they spend more of the time in there so make it harder for them to get around but add motivation for them to get around more by scatter feeding all over the cage um, enrichment feeding to make kind of finding food more challenging but also more interesting and fun for them um, and also try to take into account, um, you do have to, sorry, I'm, I'm just watching Snufkin's climbing again, <laughs> I don't have to go and rescue her. Um, she's probably okay, she's on a better side this time. 
but yes so try to take into account the different rats needs you've got in your group you can't screw another rat badly but like i'm doing you can take skinny rats out for extra food um, and you can also kind of make certain areas of the cage harder to get around and other parts easier so that there's still a bit of challenge there um, and see how that goes on finally when you're out of the cage try and encourage them to run around and exercise and you can do this as all sorts of games which are just as much fun for you as for them um, and i mentioned several of those but kind of get creative and find out what they like and what motivates them to do things i remember actually dieting your rat doesn't need to kind of negatively affect your relationship dieting your rats can actually mean you get closer to them um, so things like when i take a rat out of the cage to let the others have kind of a go at the food without them I tend to spend a lot of time running around and playing games with them or um, just giving them cuddles because <laughs> it's nice to have cuddles sometimes. Some of my rats will even cuddle for a period of time. Twizzle is one, interestingly, um, particularly now she's a bit fat, so <laughs> bless her. Um, yeah, so I will kind of try and do that with them and actually I find that we generally get closer for it um, and they actually quite sometimes enjoy that interaction more so, so you're not punishing them for being overweight it's not their fault it's their metabolism um, what you're doing is helping them right i've really got to go and rescue Faye. i can't be in trouble no nope, no nope, that's not the place to go no other rat has got on top of the tv Faye has <laughs> bless you you're gonna be a um, handful for your eventual mum Right, so those are the main things in terms of dieting. Like I say, I'm going to feed back on this in, in future videos. We'll see how Twiz is getting on. Um, and I will report back what's been successful and what's not been successful um, and what's particular things I've tried. Um, so from, from now, my main action plan is reducing the feed. Um, and I'll see, I'll, I'll probably do 110, but I'll take um, Twiz out for a bit longer and make it harder for her to get hold of. Um, I will be skitter scatter feeding in a more challenging manner. And I'll be doing some more enrichment feeding and getting some of the things out. And I will be taking Twizzle out for the start of every other feed and later on for every other feed as well um, to kind of try and reduce the amount that she's eating from each of those feeds. And I'm aiming for, um, I'd, I'd be quite happy if I get 50 gram loss with her. I'll give her a feel and see. She may need to lose more weight then, she may not, but that's probably about right. So if I can lose about 10 grams to 20 grams a week, that shouldn't take me long but it's going to be harder with her. It's harder for a spade doe to lose weight than it is for a kind of entire doe. I had a couple of rats come once um, and they were like about 150 grams overweight. They were, they were obese um, and they'd basically been rehomed and I was just kind of looking after them before I could get them to their eventual home and find them a kind of final home. And they, um, they were losing about 20 grams a week. Um, I think one even lost 30 grams one week, which is a bit much, but they had a lot of extra weight. Um, and it made a massive difference to them but that came off quite easily because whilst they weren't massively young rats they were entire I don't expect it to be as easy with Twizzle um, it's probably going to take me quite a while to get her down to a good weight but it's worth a try um, if nothing else if I can get a bit off her so she can be a bit more active that will help in the long run and it, she'll also be happier too so it's well worth it so um, I'll just see if I can get Twizzle to say goodbye hey Twiz hey yes it's me She's a good girl. So um, over and out from the girl, birthday girl and over and out from me and we shall see how we get on. Bye bye.